Good evening. Welcome to the 2023 White Rose Tribute Event. My name is Monty Starr. I am president of the Holocaust Center's Board of Directors. I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. I'd like to give a special thank you to Jaque and Yamalet, our accomplished violinists and cellists, for providing such lovely music. Jaque is a full-time musician, while Yamalet is a strings teacher for the Orange County Public Schools. Since our center was founded by Tess Wise over 40 years ago, our mission has been to use Holocaust education as a tool to build a just and caring community free of anti-Semitism and all forms of prejudice and bigotry. This has been a timeless mission that is certainly most relevant today, living in a state and society with anti-Semitism and acts of hatred on the rise. To everyone here tonight, thank you for helping us make a difference. <laughs> to our dedicated sponsors and everyone that contributed to our silent auction, including the many talented artists that created special Hope and Humanity centerpieces, your generosity means the world to our board and our staff. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the many dignitaries in attendance. City of Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. <laughs> City Commissioner Robert Stewart. <laughs> Commissioner Regina Hill. <laughs> Commissioner Tony Ortiz. And Commissioner Bakari Burns. <laughs> also representing Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings is Carol Burkett. Deputy Chief of Staff. In addition, we have State Attorney Monique Worrell. And finally, from the Office of Congressman Maxwell Frost, we have Director, uh, Direct, District Director Jason Henry and Deputy District Director Sarah El Badre. <clears throat> we also have with us Terry Olson, from Orange County Arts and Cultural Affairs, and Jennifer Evans, President of United Arts. Your dedicated support is incredibly important and deeply appreciated. We are delighted to be gathered here at the Orlando Science Center, thanks to our friends and partners, Paula Wyatt with Possible Events and Larry Epstein with the Launch Group. And now it is my privilege to welcome our event co-chairs to the stage, board members Lori Levin and Gary Owens to speak about tonight's prestigious award and our wonderful honoree. Good evening to all of you and thank you again for being here. I've been a board member and support of the Holocaust Center for a long time, as well as part of the dedicated tribute event committee. Thank you to everyone else who served on the committee with you, with me, and made this night possible. This year, I am delighted to co-chair the event with Gary Owens. Gary and I stand here both representing healthcare and also the vital importance of the Holocaust education in our service to the board. What you may not know, is that our friends at Florida Blue also represent both. We stand united for the greater health of our community, which means one free of prejudice and discrimination, one free of hatred of all kinds. I'm going to let Gary share more about why Tony and Florida Blue Foundation are such deserving honorees this year. But first, I'd like to remind everyone of what the Tess Wise White Rose Tribute represents. The award is so named to remind us of the actions of a group of courageous University of Munich students during World War II. The group was known as the White Rose. Calling for nonviolent resistance against Hitler and the Nazis, the members of the group were not Jewish, but they understood that they had a responsibility to take a stand against the injustices they saw perpetrated by the Nazi regime. They worked day and night to create flyers which were distributed across the region, encouraging ordinary Germans to combat the tyranny of the Third Reich. 
They were an extraordinary example of young upstanders among a nation of silent bystanders, right up to the tragic outcome of their events. The Central Florida individuals not honored with the White Rose Award are the upstanders of our community. It's their belief that only through personal actions and involvement can we build a better home and nation for all. The value of inclusiveness and respect are central to their efforts. Now I'm going to hand it over to Gary to share more about our special honoree. Good evening, and thank you all again um, for being here and um, for spending the evening with us. Thank you, Lori, for the introduction as well. The Florida Blue Foundation has been a long-standing supporter of the Holocaust Center. In fact, they've been generously supporting our Upstanders program uh, for local middle schoolers since 2012. For over a decade, their generosity has made possible to uh, provide programming to impact our youth and our community, teaching them how to build empathy and respect in their peers, leading to more compassion and less bullying. And Florida Blue um, also was a sponsor in our inaugural Take Action Institute conference that enlightened and inspired nearly 350 high school and middle schoolers. As part of their mission to help build communities achieve better health, Florida Blue, through the leadership of the Central Florida Market President, Tony Jenkins, has made significant impact not just here in the greater Orlando area, but throughout our ent entire Central Florida region. Their support of countless nonprofit organizations and critical programs of need illustrates their unwavering commitment to the residents and communities they serve, including many right here in our own backyard. For example, Florida Blue and the Florida Blue Foundation have supported organizations such as iDignity, which was created to help the disadvantaged youth in Central Florida through the complex steps of getting personal identification documents. They've supported the Health Care Center for the Homeless, which provides care for the homeless and low-income housing and underinsured residents of Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County. They've supported the Hope Community Center, which is a grassroots, faith-based organization created in 1971 to assist the needs of farm workers and immigrant families throughout Central Florida. They've supported the Grace Medical Home, which provides continuous, comprehensive primary care for those that are underinsured or uninsured with no access to ongoing care within Orange County. In addition, they've increased their multicultural efforts throughout our community, supporting organizations like the Hispanic uh, Federation in a multitude of ways, such as providing funding for hurricane relief, uh, health checkup events, hunger relief, and much more. Most recently, you may have heard that they partnered with Lift Orlando, Advent Health, Orlando Health, Dr. Phillips Charities, there's a long list, let me find my place again. <laughs> Community health centers and others to launch the Heart of West Lakes Wellness Center. The state-of-the-art center was intentionally designed to combat deep-rooted healthcare disparities in historically black neighborhoods of West Lakes. It features a comprehensive healthcare center regardless of insurance coverage financial and business resources, health and wellness classes, health food options, and a gathering place for nearby residents all under one roof. And those are just a few of the many organizations and programs they help support, all in an effort to build a better, healthier, and more resilient community for us all. With that, we are privileged to present the Tess Wise White Rose Award to our friend Tony Jenkins on behalf of the Florida Blue and Florida Blue Foundation for their exemplary work as upstanders.
wow. I'm not left speechless um, at many times, but to see so many uh, loved ones and friends and people that I respect um, and value here tonight really warms my heart. Um, we love serving in this community. Um, and someone asked me earlier, isn't Florida Blue um, an insurance company? What are you doing in this space? And I share it with them that listen, Whenever we see good work that's changing lives in our community, we want to join in. We want to be a part of it. It takes, it takes all of us to do that. So let me um, start by saying what an honor and privilege it is to accept this year's Tess Wise White Rose Award on behalf of Florida Blue and the Florida Blue Foundation. To be added to the long, illustrious list of the previous award recipients is extremely humbling, like I mentioned before. So many prominent and respected individuals and organizations that I deeply admire grace this list. And all of them have made such a tremendous impact to our Central Florida community. Now, my assistant, Saudi is gonna get nervous now because I'm gonna go off script a little bit. So I've, I've been in this community since 1978. I, I came here as a junior in college and worked for Disney um, and never left. Left for five years to go back to Jacksonville. So I've seen us grow, learn from each other, and become the community that we are today. Let me say that I, I, I want to sincerely thank everyone at the Holocaust Memorial Resource and Education Center of Florida and their entire organizing committee for this prestigious recognition and for putting on this amazing annual event. For more than 75 years, we at Florida Blue have been serving the citizens of Florida, working towards our mission of helping people and communities achieve better health. As a part of that commitment, we recognize that it truly takes a village of partnerships, collaborations, and teamwork to make things happen and move the needle towards positive change. Ultimately, we rise and fall as one, and we're all in this together. That's why we're extremely proud to be a longtime supporter of the Upstanders Middle School Anti-Bullying Initiative. Rooted in Holocaust education, the Upstanders program challenges students to study one of the world's paramount examples of prejudice in order to understand the role each of us play in shaping a better future. Since its inception in 2010, the Upstanders program has been provided to more than 25,000 students in 68 schools located in Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and Brevard counties. We couldn't be more proud to support such an amazing and impactful program that mirrors many of our very own principles and values. At the core of who we are as an organization, we are fully committed to educate and alleviate hatred, prejudice, and discrimination of any kind in the many communities we serve and beyond. Ultimately, more and more of late, we continue to see a rise of individuals and groups attempting to spread anti-Semitic and hateful messages throughout our great nation, our region, and sadly, even here locally. The work of the Holocaust Memorial Resource and Education Center and the many organizations like it is now more important and critical than ever. We must always remember and never forget the important and tragic lessons taught to us by the Holocaust. As the great Winston Churchill stated, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Our country has, has and always will be a symbol of democracy, freedom, and opportunity. As Americans, we must remain united in our commitment 
to stand up to hate, bigotry, discrimination, and oppression in any form wherever it's found. Out of tragedy, we find hope. Where there's ignorance, we shall educate. And when there's silence, we will shout. Hate speech against any religious or ethnic group is wrong. Florida Blue and our parent company, Godwell, will not stand silent when it occurs, particularly when it happens right here in our hometown. The city beautiful. Where all of us live, work, and raise our families. Our company, represented by many of my colleagues here tonight, embrace a culture that accepts and celebrate our differences. And we are committed to ensuring that the diverse communities we serve know they have our unwavering support. Together, we must continue to build a community of empathy, inclusiveness, and respect. <laughs> Only then, think about it, can we truly grow, blossom, and thrive like the symbolic white rose we so cherish. I'd like to leave you with a few other thoughts. Many of you know that I'm an avid reader. I think the last time I checked over the last 10 years, I think I'm up to about 620 books right now. Um, now, a lot of those are audio, okay? Still counts, though. Still counts. Um, ma many of you know that, that um, I, I love reading some quotes, and one quote that always sticks with me is from the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who said, the greatest tragedy in our current social system is not the so-called noisiness of the bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. And finally, one of my favorite books is called The Anatomy of Peace. And the theme of this book, it can be summed up in this one small section in the book. And it, and it states this, in the way we regard our children, our spouses, neighbors, colleagues, and strangers, we choose to see others either as people like ourselves or as objects. They either count like we do or they don't. In the former case, since we regard them as we regard ourselves, we say our hearts are at peace. In the latter case, since we systematically view them as, as inferior, we say our hearts are at war. A heart at peace is when we see that others are people, just like us, with the same hopes, fears, needs, cares, as real to me as my own. When you have a heart at war, you tend to see others as objects, obstacles, vehicles, and irrelevancies. I hope we can choose to leave here tonight and treat others and everyone with a heart of peace. Thank you. Once again, congratulations, Tony. And now it is my pleasure to introduce two incredibly impressive high school students to the stage. Please welcome Sam Birnbaum from Winter Park High School and Milani Ellis from Dr. Phillips High School. Congratulations to Mr. Jenkins and Florida Blue for their amazing work. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here tonight. My name is Sam Birnbaum, and I'm a junior at Winter Park High School. 
I've been lucky enough to work with students from all around Orlando at the Holocaust Center, as well as part taking part in their Take Action Institute team last year, and I'm looking forward to their second annual conference coming up this October. Tonight, I come to speak to you all about the experiences that led me to join that team. Last year at Winter Park High, in a men's restroom, there was anti-Semitic, homophobic, racist, and other bigoted symbols found. The students were heartbroken at the incident and heartbroken at the lack of response. The administration, like usual in any sort of incident, quickly addressed the issue and just as quickly sweeped it under the rug. But this time, the students wanted to be a part of making that change, and they did not know how. They did not know how to take action to build a more equitable campus climate and prevent such, a ha prevent such events from repeating. Hi, my name is Milani Ellis, and I'm also a junior, but at Dr. Phillips High School. I too have had the opportunity to be a part of Take Action Institute and look forward to staying involved because sadly this year, 2023, the incident that Sam just described happened at my school. It was in our bathroom stalls that were inscribed with hate symbols and racism and other just terrible things that a parent posted publicly after finding. I personally feel annoyed that this type of hate and anti-Semitism is still happening today. What is even more upsetting is the fact that the only reason people know about this event is that it was publicized. Which brings up the question, what about the writing on the walls that aren't reported? When will those actions be corrected? Mr. Pointer and the center assisted my student body in making those corrections. We developed a diverse council of the student body to partner with administration and act as that bridge the Principal's Advisory Council. To continue this work and build off of it, the center brought in Mr. Matt Merzell. Mr. Merzell has spent the latter half of his life connecting Holocaust survivors with liberators. And he gave one of the most impactful speeches I've ever heard. If it was not for him coming to speak and the work of the center and its programming and its staff, my school would not have seen the change that it did. It was through the Take Action Institute and the Holocaust Center, I discovered how much more effective we can be when we take part in collective action and do not work in silos. I saw firsthand the effect that this education had on my peers. It fostered an environment of upstanders, upstanders who come together to cultivate a more just world. We as students have the power to affect change, and it's with the programming of the Holocaust Center that we have the tools to do so. Within community initiatives like Take Action, as well as the Center for International Studies, we inform students about why these acts are so hateful and why these events have such a damaging impact. The Center for International Studies, or CIS, at Dr. Phillips have dedicated time out of the year to hold an annual Holocaust walk to remind us of the events of the past. And we also have cultural nights to help one another understand our different backgrounds. It is because of the education that Sam and I have received, we understand the power of words and symbols how the, and how they can lead to dangerous actions. Education is truly, truly the key in addressing and preventing such behavior. Many hate crimes are committed out of ignorance or for attention. If we can address the problem at its source of unknowingness, we can get rid of one cause and move on to others. In my opinion, with so much information accessible, it is easy, easy to be misled or ignorant. Choosing not to understand or ignore why these words and phrases are so impactful is a part of the issue. We all must do our part and be willing to better understand others and learn empathy. This is where you all can help us make an even bigger difference tonight. Your continued generosity will help us expand crucial programming from ages from elementary school through college so that we can all be those same upstanders, so that we can all drive change and unity within our own diverse communities. In these times of divisiveness, with blatant expressions of hate all around us, in our schools, and our public parks, projected onto buildings and on flyers around towns, now is the time to take action. What has happened at my school or Milani's is not an isolated incident, and you can help us combat it. It is super easy to make a donation, so please take out your cell phone. I'll give you all a minute to do that if you haven't already. <laughs> you can help make a difference right here, right now. Text HMREC to 41444 
and United Arts will match that donation by 15%. Check out the screen for more details on how to help. Any size donation tonight builds the next generation of community leaders, the people we trust to fight the hate we speak of tonight. Again, that's H-M-R-E-C, all, all one word, no spaces, text it to 41444. Then follow the prompts. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for listening. Now let's invest in the upstanders of our future now before it's too late. Make sure to send in your donation by text if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much for supporting us and being here tonight. We hope that our message and our experiences have reached you. We hope that it's inspired you to take that first step towards change. This change is happening all around the world and tonight in our own backyard in the Orlando Science Center. Help us sustain the work of the center for many generations to come. Now it is my honor and my privilege to turn it over to Ms. Kathy Turner, Vice President of Marketing and Development for the Hawkeye Center. Thank you, Sam and Milani. This is who we are doing our most important work for, current students and future generations of students, maybe your children, maybe your grandchildren. For my own kids, and my 13-year-old daughter's right here filming me, thank you, Cameron. 13-year-old uh, daughter, Cameron, Howard Middle School, um, talking about upstanders programs in middle schools. I can't think of anything more vital and valuable than finding creative ways to teach, inspire, and empower them. Our goal has been and will always be to create more compassionate, respectful, and generous upstanders like Tony Jenkins and so many of you here. Thank you for continuing to be generous, wink, wink, uh, by texting in a gift to United Arts to receive that 15% match. You have until this Sunday, April 30th, right, Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. Jennifer Evans, United Arts. You have until Sunday. Why wait when you can text right now? Text HMREC to 41444. We also have uh, paper pledge forms that you can complete at the table on the way out if you prefer. All donations matter in this battle against hate. Now, last year I stood on stage to present to you the new exterior renderings for a future Holocaust Museum for Hope and Humanity to be built right up the street. And tonight, I am happy to welcome our new-ish CEO, Tali Dippold, to the stage. She's gonna introduce our latest concept and the goals for our distinctive and incredibly special future home. Please welcome Tali after you make your gift and get excited for a truly unique and a symbolic approach and a very thoughtful outreach strategy for how we're going to inspire and impact students, young and old, for many years to come. Thank you, Kathy, Sam, and Milani. And thank you, Tony. On behalf of our board and my entire team, please know how extremely proud we are to honor you with the Tess Wise White Rose Award. Sam and Milani truly embody the heart and soul of our mission. They represent the thousands of students who have been inspired and transformed through educational opportunities donors like you make possible. As I stand here, honored to be leading this organization for the past 10 months, I would like to extend a special thank you to all of you for welcoming me to Orlando with open arms. I look around the room and I'm truly moved to see uh, friends that have become like family over the past 10 months, so thank you. I'm a believer that things happen for a reason, and my being here is bashert, or meant to be. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to meet our founder, Tess Wise, of blessed memory during my first few weeks here, an opportunity that I will cherish as we carry forward her timeless mission. Tonight, 
I'm excited to share with you the latest renderings of the Holocaust Museum for Hope and Humanity, where we will continue to provide empowering experiences for future generations. As you approach the iconic 43,000 square foot building in downtown Orlando, as Kathy said, very close by, you'll immediately notice the building's unique shape representing a shofar or ram's horn in its curvature and texture. The ram's horn has been used over time as a call to action, aligning with the museum's goal to embrace the lessons of the Holocaust and take actions to fight prejudice and intolerance wherever we encounter it. In front of the window of hope is a memorial plaza serving as a place of gathering and reflection, including a memorial fountain commemorating the six million Jews that perished during the Holocaust and offering a serene area for contemplation. The exterior symbolism prepares the visitor for the core experience inside, where we teach the story of the Holocaust from its foundation to how we come together to remember it today. By hearing from the individuals who lived through it, we will foster human connections and motivate people to take action in their own communities as we bridge our differences with others to strengthen our society as a whole. Throughout the museum, we will reimagine the way we teach and learn about the Holocaust by basing the entire encounter on USC Shoah Foundation eyewitness accounts, including diaries, letters, and testimonies. We ask museum goers to examine how and why people made choices prior to and during the Holocaust and then to understand firsthand the consequences of these choices. The individuals themselves will help visitors make direct connections as to why what happened 80 years ago is integral to how we live today. In this context, we will be forced to confront how and why genocide still happens in spite of global insistence that we remember the significance of the Holocaust. We will examine why anti-Semitism endures and how Holocaust education helps combat it. Our museum is timely and has never been more pressing than this current moment. By combining what we know about effective learning methods with the needs of our community stakeholders, visitors will be able to see themselves in the story of how we remember and learn about the Holocaust today. Practice ways to move our own values into action and affirm that people have choices even when some choices may supersede their own, we still have a collective responsibility to act. Please stay tuned for updates from our team on the new museum, which include our amazing partners, the USC Shoah Foundation, our owner's rep, Chris Collins with MGAC, exhibit design firm, Thinkwell Group, Carolyn Harris Consulting, design architect and architect of record, Bayer Blinder Bell, local architect, Hunton Brady, and our local general contractor, Austin Commercial. And as you are aware, and as many of the individuals who spoke tonight, Central Florida has seen an alarming rise in anti-Semitism in the past year. We have decided to take a stand and to move forward. We've been working hard on programming to meet the needs of the local community, and we're thrilled to announce that we'd love for you to engage with us on an upcoming initiative to make hate history through community conversations for a unified Florida. On May 11th, we will host a community conversation about anti-Semitism led by area leaders, our center staff, and law enforcement experts, and moderated by our board member, Pastor Joel Hunter. Thank you all for joining us this evening and congratulations once more to Florida Blue and Florida Blue Foundation. 
I'd like to personally say a final thank you to Lori and Gary. Can you please join me back on stage? It takes all of us as individuals working towards a collective goal to make change. I'd like to take a moment to thank our dedicated board members, our remarkable team, Kathy, who we really should, a huge thank you to Kathy. Christine, Stacy, Taylor, Marnie, Stephen, Arlene, Tammy, and Neota. And a huge thank you to all of you for attending this evening and for your support. The right, White Rose continues to be a symbol of respect, hope, and action for us all. Thank you for being a part of this goal. If you have been bidding on an auction item, the auction is now closed. So please check to see if you have won any items and be sure to pick up your item on the way out. We also have flyers at the exit about this uh, community conversations for uh, Unified Florida, the next combating anti-Semitism program on May 11th. So please grab a flyer on your way out. Thank you all one more time for being here. Have a wonderful evening.